I'm Carolina Urrutia. I worked for Bogotá city government for four years, deputy mayor for the environment, and right now I'm doing consulting work. I think it's a mistake to think of the transport sector as a whole. We have to consider the huge differences between the global north, the global south, being so extremely different in every single country and city. When I think about the European transport sector, I see a sector that's moving quickly enough, that's moving mostly boldly and making significant investments. When I look at the global south, I see a lot of differences. So when we think about how quickly the sector or transport is moving in general, I think we have to do a lot of zooming in and double clicking to realize how those who are quicker to change and to transition can actually help in places where we have more vulnerable economies, bigger problems with air quality, and figure out how we can help each other and make sure that the change at the global stage is happening at the rate that it has to. A lot of the brave and bold decisions that have to happen at this point have to do with climate justice and climate equity. And it's realizing not everybody is standing at the same place. So I think making sure that we help out those who are slower to transition is the best way to ensure that the transition will continue to happen. Otherwise, what will happen is what we've already started to see, which is the political backlash when we have actors left behind, feeling that climate change may be a hoax just to make them more vulnerable. That is the worst scenario we can imagine. So it's going to take some sacrifice from some, some sectors. It's not a win-win all around. But I think if we transfer those costs in an equitable manner, it's going to be easier for this to take the pace that it needs. I think the risk is high, and we have to make sure that we address it by building the right narratives. We have to have really good stories to tell. Stories that speak not only of fear and urgency, but also of hope and the way changes are already taking place. Finding those examples that are really breaking the mold and showing us that change is possible, then we're going to diminish the risk. Politicians have to think about who's going to vote for them. When we make sure they tell the stories of job making, of economies growing, and of the most vulnerable actors in society having a better position thanks to adaptation and mitigation, then the risk is going to be lowered. I think focusing on net zero means only one thing. We have to make fossil fuels more expensive and harder to use through effective incentive structures uh, that may mean banning some forms of transportation slowly but surely and making sure they don't have inequitable uh, impacts on society. We have to be serious and committed to timelines that phase out fossil fuels and don't give unfair advantages to those using them. It's easy sometimes to think when we're with like-minded individuals that change is easy. But the truth is that it's hard and the challenges are there every day. There's a lot of regulatory capture. There's effort not only from the fossil fuel industry, but with everybody comfortable with the way the world is working, either being afraid of change or actively stopping change. So I have to remind us that besides being bold and besides having all the information uh, in our hands, we also have to be stubborn. We have to be stubbornly optimistic, knowing that these things can happen, but we also have to be just really stubborn in terms of knowing what we have to do and getting it done. There's going to be a political cost. There's going to be a social cost sometimes. We just have to leverage those costs out, make sure they're as equitable as possible, and to make things happen. <laughs>